so a few, I, I, I'm from Zipline, um, and Zipline is trying to build a new way of delivering medical products to the hardest to reach people in the world. Uh, this is a picture that a member of our team took a few years ago. Uh, it turns out that in most of, um, in, in much of the developing world, it's very hard to get places because of the state of the roads. Uh, we were spending time in, the, in, in uh, several countries where this is the case. This is a picture a member of our team took. Uh, and this is a, a actually a, a truck taking medis medicine out to a hospital. Uh, as a result of how challenging these roads are, 5.8 million children die every year due to lack of access to mas basic medical products. Uh, that seemed like a really big problem, and I think at Global Public Health, we've been spending about 50 years trying to solve that problem using trucks and motorcycles that depend on the roads, so Zipline set out to build something that wouldn't depend on the roads. This is what we're doing today in Rwanda. Zipline uses electric autonomous aircraft to deliver blood to hospitals across the country. Uh, the Z in the middle is our distribution center, and all of those little blood icons are hospitals that we serve, and so we're able to go from uh, a, a scenario where these hospitals, it could take upwards of like four to six hours to uh, get a blood transfusion because doctors would have to drive to uh, a, a transfusion center to pick up blood and then bring it back to a patient whose life is uh, uh, literally on the line. Uh, and now they can get it in an average of 15 minutes. This is actually the world's first autonomous system operating at national scale anywhere. And it happened first in Rwanda. So would you guys like to see how it works? This is a ZIP, one of the planes that we build, delivering three units of blood to a mother who had postpartum hemorrhage at this hospital. Uh, the plane will fly autonomously out to the hospital and make a delivery. And when we're delivering, you can see we're basically using a, a, a paper parachute, which we call an air brake. The plane never comes anywhere close to people, and we can deliver into a very, very accurate mailbox, about two parking spaces, so we can always put the blood right onto their doorstep. So it works like Uber. Uh, they can place an order over WhatsApp. They'll then receive a WhatsApp back saying, thanks, your order's been received. Uh, the delivery is 12 minutes away. And then they receive a te second text message saying, uh, the zip is one minute away, please walk outside. So uh, this is the distribution center. This is how it works. You can think of us like UPS, if UPS built the trucks and also designed them. Uh, so this is our Rwanda team, Bosco and Davis. These are the launchers that we launch vehicles off of. You'll get to see this in a moment. Uh, the planes are always ready to make emergency deliveries, and this can be deployed anywhere in the world. This was all a cornfield six months ago. So this can be deployed anywhere in the world in a couple of days. These are the pre-flight test stands where we test the planes, get them ready to launch. Uh, blood lives in the container on the left. The vehicles sleep in the container on the right. And we'll get to see a plane going out to the launcher here in a moment. The reason that we built this, we didn't just want to build something that would be technologically powerful. We wanted to build something that would be super easy to use. So the, the power of this is that anybody, anywhere with a cell phone can place an order and we can do an instant delivery to the GPS coordinates of that cell phone. So the idea is in basically instant, 100% access for everybody, no matter how remote the place they live in. This is a plane taking off one of the launchers. Uh, from the moment it leaves the end of the launcher, it's completely autonomous and traveling at about, at about 100 kilometers an hour. So that's about 10 Gs of acceleration. Uh, luckily, we don't have humans on board because that is enough to knock your beverage off your in-flight tray table. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is how we recover the planes. We don't have enough room to have, to, to have runways. We also don't have landing gear on the planes. Landing gear doesn't scale down very well. So you have to figure out a way of getting a plane from going from 100 kilometers an hour to zero in a very safe, reliable way with very little space. So the way we solve this problem is, is a solution that's essentially a combination of an aircraft carrier and a bouncy castle. This plane will come in and at, uh, it sounds like we, we need sound, by the way. Uh, it will use RTK differential GPS to a centimeter level accuracy, catch that tail hook on a line, and then plop down on this actively inflated mat. Uh, th this is literally built by a bouncy castle company. And we, we say if it's good enough for kids, it's good enough for Africa. <laughs> They're very durable. You can like beat them up, and they work great. So it's a simple solution, highly cost effective. And we land uh, thousands of planes this way. And just to give you one more uh, video of a, of a landing at full speed to give you a sense for the speed. The other nice thing this video shows, you know, when we launched in Rwanda, we were very worried about community acceptance. Turns out we could not have been further from the truth. We usually have about 100 people sitting on the fence watching, and they cheer every launch and every landing. <laughs> uh, in fact, when President Kagame was at our distribution center, he looked out at all of them and he said, those are the future engineers of Rwanda, which I thought was super profound. 
Um, in, and often when I show up early in the morning at 6 a.m. before the distribution center is operational, there are people on the fence there waiting, to, like getting good seats, getting the front row seats. Uh, and when you ask these people, by the way, what they think of Zips, they just say it's a sky ambulance. So they totally get it. And at this point, we're actually receiving job applications from people saying, I see the zip fly over my house every morning. I want to be a part of this. Uh, obviously, delivering blood to all these different hospitals requires uh, planes to be able to occupy the same airspace. So we design all the multi-vehicle deconfliction algorithms from scratch. So the air traffic control that allows planes to fly together, they communicate P2P -P and assign altitude slots. And our team does, we, we build the flight computers, we design the avionics, we write the software, we design the airframes, we manufacture them. Everything is designed to solve this specific problem uh, in a really compelling, easy to use way. So this is three planes flying in the same hold. This is a plane launching, and we're about to like turn to the left and see Davis, who's communicating with uh, air traffic control in Kigali. At this point, we actually do more flights than Kigali International Airport total. So they're spending more time managing zips than they are like Boeing and Airbus airplanes, which I think we're probably going to have to change in the near future. But uh, And last thing is how we control these planes. So we basically reimagined air traffic control. What if Apple built air traffic control? So you can control a fleet of autonomous aircraft uh, from an iPad Pro. This is a plane that's 50 kilometers away from us, about to make a delivery. That blood icon is where it's going to deliver. So it'll deliver in about one second. Boom, there's the delivery. You hear them anna uh, announcing it over the radios. And you can see the other planes that are also in flight. And if you notice how it's pinging once a second, that's because the planes are communicating over the cell phone network, which is the infrastructure that works best in the markets that we serve. Uh, we actually have SIM cards in all of our planes. We actually buy a family plan for all the whole fleet because that's how we get the best rates. Um, and we're always joking, you know, if, if the cellular carrier were to look at our uh, uh, usage, they would think we we're the weirdest family ever, driving 100 <laughs> kilometers back and forth in a straight line. So uh, last video, this is what it looks like from the plane's perspective. This is going out about 45 kilometers to make a delivery. You can see we're flying over relatively uh, suburban and rural areas. But this really gives you a sense for how challenging the roads are and how mountainous these regions are. It takes forever to get out to these places. And these zips travel in a straight line at 100 kilometers an hour to get there. There you're going over a huge river that's very hard to traverse. And in a sec, we'll see it starting to go into a spiral. This is the descent helix right before the plane delivers, so it's losing altitude. and boom, there's where the delivery is occurring. Uh, one really cool thing is that because we have such accurate GPS, this is data from about 20 flights back and forth from a hospital. You can see all three altitude slots being utilized. On the right is going out, on the left is coming home. Uh, we have very accurate topographical maps, which is what allows us to fly in these areas. And you can actually see the GPS is so accurate, you can see the turbulence as the plane is going through this mountain pass. Notice how it gets wavier as we're going through. And finally, it's very important. It's not enough for every flight to be saving a human life. It's also necessary for these planes to be safe for people on the ground. And so we have a fail-safe system on board every plane that ensures that should something go wrong, the plane can come to the ground so gently that any of you could catch it. Um, I'll finish by just saying, you know, three years ago, this is all we had. We had a napkin sketch and an idea. We were told by many, many people that this was stupid and wouldn't work and wasn't technologically possible and wouldn't scale and certainly wouldn't work in Africa. Um, and so we're really proud to be part of the vision of the Rwandan government showing what's possible. Uh, and at this point, many, many other governments are reaching out saying that they want to follow in Rwanda's footsteps, which I think is an exciting paradigm shift for how technology and robotics and artificial intelligence is going to roll out over the next few years. Our long-term vision for the company is to basically take the kind of access that you have to medical care at the Mayo Clinic and make it available at every health center and every hospital everywhere in the world, regardless of how hard it is to get to those places. Thanks. <laughs>